What is up? Welcome back. Big thank you to our community and followers like you. We've hit a giant milestone for us. We have got our 100,000 subscriber YouTube button. And with this, we're going to give you our origin story. Just like any superhero, you need an origin story. Yeah, we've been doing this for about five years, so we thought we would give you a little backstory on who we are, how we got here, and a little more about us. You might not know some things. And I haven't seen this thing yet. Kim wouldn't let me open it. No, I have made it. Right, go for it. I really, we haven't opened it, not once. I just cut the tape. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. It's anticlimactic. Oh, there it oh, is. Oh, there it is. Look at that shiny guy. Look at there. It's got our name on it. Presented to Kim and Garrett Make It for passing 100,000 subscribers. So, how did we get here? How did we end up with a YouTube channel? Why did we end up with a YouTube channel? <laughs> We're going to take it back to 2010 before we ever even met. Yeah, let's little, rewind it. Tell you a little bit about us that... We haven't shared a whole lot. I don't think we've shared a whole lot about our background. So here's some interesting things you may not have known about us. Back in 2010, I was working for a government contractor as a systems engineer. I was working from home. I even won employee of the year twice. It's kind of a big deal, yeah, even back then. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> My wife at the time had been struggling with lupus and in 2010, she had passed away. So suddenly, I was a single dad of a five, nine, ten year old girls and one 14 year old boy. That's and right. You heard that right. Four kids. <laughs> four. It was just me with those four kids. And we decided we were done living the Northern Virginia life. We needed to head south. We had some family in Richmond. So we we're going to go find a good house in Richmond where we can just kick it. And we did. We found the perfect house in Richmond right on the border of the city but it was kind of in the country i could walk to wawa but i was still living on three acres so we built the skate park we had an in-ground pool and a giant like swing set thing just let that sink in a second he has a single dad four kids skate park pool it was there was a zip line over the pool so you could yes. drop into the pool yeah yes yeah. you could just imagine what it was like just uh, Garrett and his four kids. Very little furniture, <laughs> there was very little furniture but my yeah. yard yeah. was very fun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the front family room when I first, uh, first went to his house, the front family room was nothing but bikes. Everybody's bike was stored in the family room area or living room area. It was the living first room. room when you came in. It was in. the formal room. Yes. We kept the bikes in the formal room. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the den, we had a giant like sectional couch that was all just pieced together <laughs> and a giant TV. And then everybody had beds. What else do you need? Yeah, that's, 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 that's exactly what he said. We ate, we ate outside most nights. So parallel to that, in 2010, what was I doing? I was walk, working for a um, large corporate institution and I it was, I was a single mom. It was just me and my daughter, Courtney. She's the oldest in our crew. She was a teenager then. I guess she would have been about 16 then. So it's just me and Courtney. My sister lived with me and my niece, who was three at the time, they had been living with me, so Grace was born while she was living in my house. So she had been there uh, since birth, and it was the four of us in my house. But we were kind of like, um, I was kind of like a halfway house. In my family, <laughs> if you didn't have a place to live, go stay with Kim. She's got four bedrooms. You could stay in one of her rooms. <laughs> That's kind of how it was. But... Courtney was getting a little bit older. At this point, she's a teenager. She was going to school during the day and she would be working at night. And my sister's off kind of doing her thing. And I found myself alone a lot. So, you know, my other sister was like, you know what you need to do? You gotta join one of those dating apps. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. But I did. And at about the same time, <laughs> I decided I was gonna join a dating app because I work from home. So the only adult interaction I had was over phone and you know, some FaceTime stuff. But otherwise, it was all kids all the time, every day. So I decided I was gonna jump on those apps. And you know what we found on those apps? 
There's a, There's lot, a lot of, of crazy people out there. <laughs> Yeah, I think after a while I got to the point where um, it was more of an entertainment thing. So my sister and I would do it or even Courtney and I would log in and we would see who I was matched with. There was always a cast of characters and it was kind of like um, I had gotten to the point where it was kind of a joke thing for me. me Let's too. go see who was on there. I had yeah. given up and I just posted a joke profile. Yes, yeah, so that's... That's how I first came across Garrett, is he had posted the funniest profile story. It was a whole story. Was it a little bit it a, in poetry? Yes. Rap? It, it was a song? I don't know. It was a whole thing. Yes, the whole thing rhymed. It was in, if you like, a Charles Dickens kind of thing, where <laughs> I was sneaking my, my family and my kids into the bar and it was getting harder to sneak them into the bar. Uh, the mustache no longer works on the youngest uh, and her, she, yeah. her fake ID no longer looks like her. Yeah. So Whatever Papadopoulos, I don't know. It was a whole, it was just the craziest story. You wouldn't even, I wish we had saved it. Both of us are I like, I wish we had saved it. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but it made me laugh. As I read the whole thing, I thought it was funny and I could see that he hadn't been on in like two weeks. So I assumed he wasn't on match anymore, but I thought I just need to write out there and I usually would never comment first but in this case I just needed to let him know how funny that was and how I appreciated the humor in his profile story because it, I could tell that he had made a joke of it at that point too yeah. and I just could relate so I was like that was so funny <laughs> come to find out she's only like three miles away so we decided to meet at a bar in the middle get together and uh, just have a drink I had given up I didn't want any more crazies <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're just gonna have a drink same here I was like well I've got nothing else to do I'll just meet up for a drink it it'll give me Sunday something night. to do it was it was it's a, a Sunday, Sunday night. night it was so random and I was like fine I mean I figured that way we couldn't be out too late I have yeah. to be home <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> to get the kids in bed. Yeah, and then as we talked, we found we had been orbiting each other for the last several years. Yeah, we've been orbiting each other for years. Yeah, we found out that we had been to the same concert series yeah. or at the same time. Several concerts at the same time. We were even the in Chili Vegas. Chili Cook-Off at the same time. We were in Vegas at the same time. Yeah, and stayed we, somewhat near We each even other. rode the tram on the same day. We had figured all of that out yeah. early on. I can't remember all the details crazy. of that now. And then just like the same... We uh, went to the same grocery store. Gro yeah, same yeah. grocery stores, we same local the same bars bar or whatever that time. were in same that area. restaurants. Yeah. Same Starbucks. We yeah. just, yeah, never actually connected. Yeah, but I wonder how many times I passed you or whatever. You know, yeah. we had to have been at the same place at the same time at some Head point. down. Head down, gotta uh -huh. get my frappuccino. Sorry. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> so yeah, so we 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 met that first night. And we, we had hit it some up. drinks. Yeah. And yeah. I, uh, to get to know each other, I was like, "What is your dream job?" I yes. To really get to know her. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, he knew I was in IT. He knew what job I was doing. I was like, "But if I could pick any job, I would like to own my own." craft store my own scrapbook store really at the time i was scrapbooking and that's what i wanted to do was own my own scrapbooking store there was a locally owned store right down the road and i was like that's what i would love to do i would just love to have all of these craft supplies and fill the store with these craft supplies <laughs> and garrett what was your dream job? My dream job was a stunt man. <laughs> Growing I, up, that was always what you wanted, yeah, right? Yeah, until a senior in high school, I thought I was going to be a stunt man. <laughs> I thought I was going to fall from tall buildings. I thought I was going to roll a brand new car, get lit on fire, but solve some uh, mysteries on the weekends. So when I, you decided that that really wasn't a viable career, what did you decide you were going to do? Oh, well then I buckled down and I decided I was going to own a skate park. My very <laughs> own skate park. <laughs> that is what he told me. So at that time he said, if, well, before that, right? What did you decide you were going to do? What did I decide I was going to do? I was going to become an art teacher. Yes, when he was younger. But when I asked him, what is your dream job? And he said, to own my own skate park. 
So we haven't made that dream come true yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, technically, I had one in my yard at the time. You did? You so, did. I lived my dream. Yeah. <laughs> I had pros come ride my yard. I mean, it was a good yard. But, yeah, out of uh, high school, my new dream job was to become an art teacher. I wanted to catch people, young ones, before they are put in a box and teach them how to think outside the box. That's That was my dream job. Teaching youngins how to think outside the box. It's also why I love BMX. <laughs> We hit it off really well, right? And you then that, that first night we had a few drinks, we had some laughs, and then I had a call from my daughter. She had a hair emergency and I had to go home. But that's okay because I told my kids to call me around 10-ish and tell me that the house was on fire. So yeah. we were good. <laughs> He, t he said, it's okay, I know you, you know, you had that staged call. I was like, it wasn't a staged call, I promise you. It's okay. She really is. I understand. She really does have a hair emergency. She had dyed her hair, and I forgot what had happened. She ran out of color or something, and I needed to go home to take her to the store to get some more hair color so she could fix it before school the next day, because it was on a Sunday. But we hit it off. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we met up the next weekend and fast forward a year later and we were hitched. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, turned our family into the Brady Bunch. Yeah, so a year later it was Garrett and his four kids, me and my teen, and don't worry, Grace was never far behind. My sister was still close by <laughs> and nearby. And so, it was still a halfway house. Yeah, I was still, yeah. Well, once we got married, it wasn't so much of a halfway house because we had to pack everybody in there, right? Yeah. That was that was an adventure with five kids and a part-time sixth kid, right? Grace was her part-time <laughs> sixth kid, and there was a we had to fit everybody in there, eight of us, in your place. And then eventually back to my place so that was an adventure and then in 2018 my sister passed so we had grace with us full time so grace made eight <laughs> eight people in the household we had a large group we did that for a while and then i shared with garrett something i had been dabbling in which was real estate i was kind of sharing hey i think this is something we could do i think let me teach you all about it we went to some conferences we well, went was, to I vegas and had in. a journey that was a fun conference uh, she <laughs> took me to the first little seminar where they explained how things work and i was all in i was like let's do this thing i got your back yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's exactly what it was and so we met with some mentors we learned a few things and then this is this is how our i guess this is the start of our youtube journey right? yeah this is the this is our call to adventure this so, is it. so he the mentor was like you've got to get out in front of people you need to do better marketing start creating some videos get some ethos out there so that's where the video started that was and our he first... gave me like a 30-day challenge to post uh, what was it one video a week on YouTube for real estate mm -hmm. and I was like I don't even have a camera and he's like you got a phone you yeah. have a phone get Here's out your there. phone that's right mm -hmm. so that's kind of how the first time Garrett Garrett was brave enough to get in front of the camera and start doing those videos we wrote him a little script he talked about some real estate I, I information. Would try to memorize it yep and then I would give some real estate information and you did phone. great I think you did great and then from there he kind of got, he caught the YouTube bug and well, that's from there, when... I started researching about YouTube yeah. and I see that these people are doing pretty well on YouTube and I was like, somebody needs to start a YouTube channel. Somebody in our family needs to be a YouTube star. Yes, and I'm not kidding, that's basically what he said. And I will be behind the scenes supporting you 100%. Yep. I will do your video editing and everything you get in front of the camera. Yep. Kids, how about you do a YouTube channel? How about you do a YouTube channel? Came to me. I have six kids. Somebody's got to want to do a YouTube channel. You're all funny. Who's going to do it? Nobody. Nobody. And he uh, came to me, like, Kim, you do the YouTube channel. You like crafting. You like crafting. We'll do a crafting do YouTube channel. Do scrapbooking. You want yes. to do a scrapbook store? Let's start by doing a scrapbook YouTube channel. Uh, you just get in front of the camera, I will film you. Look, every month she was holding these scrapbook classes. I was, I was doing and these I was work, like, scrapbook let's workshops. Film that. She's like, no. <laughs> No. no, no, nobody would do it. Nobody would do it and the kids would say, you can't just start a YouTube channel. And I was like, yes, you can. So, so I tried my hand on my own YouTube channel. It was gonna be a BMX channel. 
but I got really bored real quick doing it by myself. Yeah, I think that was his problem. He's pretty codependent. <laughs> yeah, I need a partner. I need somebody to direct. I don't know. <laughs> so he was like, all right, I don't, because I wasn't BMXing with him. So I even tried to get her on a bike to come he, with me on he a did. ride. He yep. did. He did. He did. And I hit a tree, and that was pretty much the last time. I tried and to get Channer, Tanner to join the channel yes. and ride with me. Yes. Nobody wanted to do a BMX channel with me. So fast forward, we decide we're going to do a little DIY. So at this point, we were married. We had moved into a new house. We built a house together. We had a new bigger house that fit fit more kids in it everybody fit more, comfortably more space but with more space made it look like we had empty furniture. rooms yeah. yeah so that's where i was like okay let's we were always making things anyway for our old house and this time i was like making okay. things or fixing things putting in some french doors something we were always doing something and i was like we need to make ourselves a coffee table we need to make like all these different things i wanted to make so that's when he said okay well that's when you found uh, Shanty to Chic YouTube channel. Yes, I did. So those guys, uh, they make they make furniture, and I was like, oh my gosh, we need all this furniture. Yeah, I need I need to make this coffee table. I need to make this chair. I need to make all these things, and I want I wanted to make them, and I wanted to put them in our house. Uh, but our first big video. So well, we that's when I said, well, if we're gonna make all this stuff, yes. let's film us making all this stuff. Yes, and uh, we'll just use Shanty to Chic uh, plans while we're making this stuff yeah that's how that's it. that's, that's kind of how it started so we started with just our hands we did a few th projects with just our hands practicing yep to know some stuff yep figuring yep. it out and then of course you know the the one thing i really really <laughs> wanted was this bookcase that i had seen at world market this yeah. world market bookcase and so i didn't start with a coffee table or an end table i was like i need this eight foot tall bookcase eight foot tall the, four foot wide yes bookcase and i need this and this is how we're really this is going to be our first big project on our youtube channel so that's what we did and I we mean, did we, it she just we just dove right in yeah. uh, again i think we were filming with one of our phones i think it was my phone we were filming with in the garage yeah and yeah and then that's where we so that video did okay so we started doing these videos and it, it did all right i mean we we basically knew that first year we were just throwing these videos yeah, out into the world a lot, a lot of stuff with just our hands we did some acting because, uh, yeah, I knew the only people that were going to watch this is my account, your account, and then I'll probably make all the kids watch it. Yeah, that's kind of how it was. Everybody go first. out there and give that a th thumbs up. It's and probably they, that way for at least the first year, right? And the kids would give us a little bit of feedback. You guys are cringy. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, that's because you're my kids. Yeah, we were cringy. You don't get it. <laughs> and then <laughs> tell your funny story about how you had to, you were like, okay. Let's get let's get more people out there. I read if you post your videos out on Reddit, yeah. you can get some good mm -hmm. interaction. You know, you're gonna get more eyes. Get Tons a lot of, followers. of people. It's yeah. like it's like advertising your video. You put it out there on Reddit. Mm -hmm. Woo! Were those people mean on Reddit? <laughs> <laughs> they they were so oh mean they made me want to quit. I, I thought about quitting because they were so mean. They're... But it was filled with a lot of good information, just um you know, tossed at me in a very mean way. Like, <laughs> he learned a lot. Didn't you learn I, I a lot? I learned though? so much. So but it was so mean, but it made me go back and reanalyze how we do the videos, uh, what information that we provide, how the video is structured. Uh, we, I got a camera, I got a microphone, I got a tripod stand, we got some lights, yep. and we moved out of the garage. Yep, that Basically, was the one thing he was like, all right, we've got to get out of the garage. It's too echoey, we can't light it properly. So there went my dining room. <laughs> no dining room. We're going to move a table in there and we're going to film in the dining room. That's well, going to be our studio. If we could get 500 views on a video that was shot horribly and tore up on Reddit, <laughs> if we improve some things, maybe we can get some more views. And then that was our first year. We spent our first year out of our dining room and did lots of, lots and lots of different 
projects. Testing out a bunch of different stuff. We were, we learned a lot that year. We learned how resin works. We learned sublimation. We yeah. learned cricket stuff. We, we did some rhinestone things. Rhinestone yeah. things. We learned a lot that first year. We did some wood. I learned what pocket holes are. I mean, <laughs> so much. I can't even wrap my mind around how much we learned in the first year. And then we ended that year learning about how to use cameras and lighting and we really and did do it build it make it that year we did such a variety of things but the more we learned about youtube the more they were like oh you should niche down you should niche down i was like i am niche down. niche down i'm doing crafts and things we're i'm making diy stuff. diy yeah niched. diy that's niche done been niche <laughs> then at the end of 2018 we took a break we took a break from YouTube for two weeks. Right, we had our corporate jobs. We had the week of Christmas and the week after Christmas. Both of us had it off. Um, the week after Christmas, we usually go on some sort of little family trip. So we took the two weeks off of YouTube as well. Didn't even think about it. But guess what? YouTube forgot about us. <laughs> I mean, forgot about us. We had to start all over again we took that two week break and that's it they youtube stopped right up. yeah they yeah. they thought we weren't a channel anymore <laughs> they quit yeah they quit and so it stopped serving us up i mean just completely stopped serving us up 2019 was the year we were going to rebuild we were going to focus on the cricket and we were going to niche down to home decor items we had pretty much built all the furniture that we needed and now that we were in our front dining room space we were going to do smaller home decor craft items which were fun we made lots of different projects with the cricket we did pretty much everything that you could think of with the Cricut. Yeah, she was always coming up with a new idea, but I wanted to do stuff out of wood and I wanted to make thicker items. So I ended up getting an X-Carve. It took a while to put together and then the machine almost did what I was looking for, but it was a great introduction into CNC machines. And that's where we started doing our first 3D uh, door signs and we did our first 3D vertical porch leaner. And that video did really well. Did really well. That's another one that was kind of uh, super inspirational for us. So we had already had our online store where we were selling stencils. And now people were asking, do you sell these kits to make the vertical porch leaners? And we were like, yes, yes we, we do. do. <laughs> so we started selling the welcome to our home kits and a couple of other kits, right? A couple so of other stencils. That was fun. That was uh, business was growing. It was growing. And then I think that fall, we also started with some farmer's markets. Yeah. Selling at our, our local farmer's market. Right. And we just started, we just tried it out. It was just something we wanted to try. So we took our little tent that we were using for uh, softball Sorry, games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where we could all sit under there in some shade. We took it to the farmer's market uh, with two camp chairs, hung our little signs from the tent and they did well they, did they okay. were they were very well received well we, we learned a lot and it inspired us to do better at our booth yeah yeah yes by spring of the next year we had we were getting very creative yes. and uh, building projects just for a craft booth another thing that happened in 2019 that was inspiring um, that kind of came from the work we were doing with the cricket was we worked with our first influencer our first collab yes we worked with auntie tay and we did a tay takeover where we kind of did a video for her channel and she published the video but we actually did all of the work on it so she kind of did the intro and the outro and then we did the content in the middle yeah yeah and we did several videos for her uh, like that and we gained a lot of new subscribers and a lot more visibility into a, a whole different well and into a different community it wasn't yeah. so much different but new community let's put it that way 2020 was the year of growth and that was our year of the laser too we kicked off the year with me convincing Kim that I needed to get a Glowforge I needed something that could produce our signs faster quieter and more precise we had been using the x carve and it was fun and we really liked some of the projects that we did with it but garrett promised me promised me that we could use that glowforge to do what we were doing with the x carve and do more with what we were doing with the cricket with this laser yep. and he also promised me that it would pay for itself <laughs> 
<laughs> so we took out a small loan and we purchased the Glowforge. And it did, it did. We, the, our business was able to pay for that Glowforge um, within three months, right? Yeah, and it was like three months. We were super excited and again, inspired by the way we were able to make some new projects. We'll uh, take our projects to another level. Take yes. our finished product to another level yes which helped them sell at the farmers markets right that just encouraged us to do even more farmers markets uh, different farmers markets in the area where we were able to kind of sell our wares to new people and introduce them to what we were doing and, and I felt like we were almost ready for a craft show but then everything came to a screeching halt because a pandemic hit and then right behind the pandemic hitting I was downsized my job was a trainer, and since we weren't doing any in-person training, they kind of no longer needed me, so I got displaced. But I had enough runway to actually get this thing running, which was great because at the same time I was trying to get it running, DIY on the internet had really picked up because everybody was at home. Mm-hmm. Those home craft kits were doing really well, and our business, again, grew in 2020 we were probably one of the few businesses that actually were able to grow in 2020 but we were lucky enough that garrett was able to go full-time in our business full time and that helped a lot but then the glowforge was no longer able to keep up i couldn't run the x carve and the glowforge fast enough or long enough for us to keep up in the store so i ended up purchasing a large laser the size of something like a small Honda. <laughs> <laughs> and that took over our garage. So the Glowforge was indoors. We could vent it out a window, no problem. But when we got the large laser, that's where we had to start clearing out the garage, clearing making the garage. room, and that became the central hub of our business. And we started getting wood in uh, sheets of 20 stacked. And uh, that was very comical, trying to take them off piece by piece and cutting them and getting them all into the house. As you grow, new adventures, and new about, lessons learned. About that time, Tanner had lost his job due to the pandemic. So I said, you need a job, we need help. I think you should come work for us. And, and then we were like, you don't want to go get another job yeah, out there. Who You're going to get sick. You can just come and work for us. Stay yeah. here where it's safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And they did, and he also helped our business grow. He also helped us grow. 2021 was the year of expansion. We started with moving to a bigger farmer's market where we had a bigger booth, and we learned a lot from last year that we started to implement this year. Right, with that, that was again, still during the pandemic. So we were able to continue to go to the farmer's markets because they were outdoors. So people felt a little more comfortable going out and shopping with the mask on, but at least you were outdoors. Now, the funny part about that one is it started um, in the fall, so November, December, but the bulk of that market was in January, February, and March. The cold months. The cold months. And if you know anything about Garrett, he hates the cold. So while I would sit at the booth with blankets on and a hat and gloves for the people just coming in to get their mushrooms at the mushroom lady beside us, Garrett always had a reason why he had to go sit in the car and do something. I was working. <laughs> there was work to be done. There's no time for lollygagging. But that... Uh, that market did well for us, uh, but that inspired us to go right into the spring and do larger craft shows. So that was one of our first big craft shows that we did, Arts in the Park here in Richmond, and that was pretty exciting. Well, that one went super well. We yeah. sold out and we were super inspired. People yes. loved the stuff that we had to sell. Yes, and uh, we actually worked with our first local business, remember? Oh, that's right. Uh, she contacted us a couple of months later and said, hey, I own a local Local gift shop in the area and I would love to stock your product in our store so that was fun that was exciting yep and then um, like we said you know this all during uh, 2020 and into 2021 the home craft business continued to grow so Garrett started with the 
I'm going to need help in this business. I'm going to need help. It's time to grow or die, Kim. That's what he said. I need help. <laughs> so I ended up putting in my notice and I went full time in our business in 2021. That was a huge leap of faith. Again, we both had really good corporate jobs and it was really hard to give that up, that security, that little bit of safety net. But we jumped in with both feet. So the business was doing really well. We had attended the RVA big market. We had attended our first real craft show. Uh, we were still doing the the original farmers market uh, on Saturdays. We were taking and setting up our little booth on Saturdays, and someone came up to us and asked us if we did paint nights, and we said yes. yes. Yes, we do. We had already been talking about it, but when she asked us if we would be interested in coming to their clubhouse and hosting a paint night, I was so excited because I really didn't know how to break into that business. Uh, and she really opened the doors for us. Yeah, uh, she forced us to learn and meet somebody who knew what they were doing. Yeah. And gave uh, us a ton of information. We, I reached out to someone locally who was doing paint nights. I told her a little bit about what I wanted to do. Uh, Courtney and I had lunch with her one day and she kind of shared her little checklist with us. Uh, we were furiously taking <laughs> notes and that really helped us prepare for this first workshop. And the women at the first workshop were so great. They knew it was the first time um, and they were just super supportive. Well, right? we had a great time. They let us know that we were doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. super supportive. Gave us feedback, yeah. And, and kept, us, kept inspiring us to keep going. So yeah. we, we still keep in touch with them. Yeah, we've Our done a first. couple. Yeah, we've done a couple workshops with them, and they they are still super supportive. And we continue to grow throughout that year to the point where we had outgrown the house, uh, painting and shipping, and the lasers have taken over every nook and cranny of the house at that point, and it was time to grow or die, Kim. Garrett had started this journey with us in the July time frame with we need to start finding a space. I think we got we don't have enough space here. We need to look for a new space. And we started meeting with some realtors. Um, but that didn't seem like something that was ever... It took so long. I, well, I just didn't think it was something we could do. I just wasn't sure we could afford a space. I wasn't sure I was ready to take that leap and sign a lease for our own commercial space. Uh, we looked at different spaces. They were way too much money. Um, but then we found this space that we're in now. It ended up being perfect. It is way larger than what we had expected for the budget that we were expecting. And it came with several different rooms to do different things. We were able to have our own office space. We were able to film and have a studio space. Um, we even had space up front that we didn't know what to do with. Yeah, we had no idea what we were gonna do with that large room up front. We moved in and we were able to get two more lasers. So we grew our business and we really jumped in with both feet. <laughs> so we took on the commercial lease and then took on loans for two more lasers. But, but we were able to produce more inventory yes. for our craft shows. We did larger craft shows and that kind of, well, I guess that takes us into 2022, doesn't it? That does take us into 2022. In 2022, we did not re-register for the farmer's markets. We decided we were gonna focus on the craft shows. I, our ideal customer was going to be at the craft shows. And that's what we found, right? Yeah. So we found lots of different shows. We started venturing out. We moved um, out of the Richmond area and we went to South Carolina. We were up as far as Maryland. Mm -hmm. We did um, Fredericksburg. We tried um, to hit the bigger shows. Yes. Somewhere where Virginia we Virginia Beach. Yep. Yeah. Now that we were able to produce more inventory, we need to hit bigger shows. With that, we still had that big room up front, and not every weekend was a craft show weekend, so we knew we needed to do something with that front room to help us generate some revenue. So we took those paint nights and we scaled them up to paint workshops and we created our workshop space in the front room and uh, that was exciting. Yeah, that was exciting. We had our first workshop April 1st. April Fool's Day yep. 2022. And it was all friends and family <laughs> to give us a little beta so that we'd be able to learn and actually make some adjustments before we had real customers coming in. And then that has continued to grow. Um, that has slow, slowly gained traction. 
um, we're working on our marketing. So that is something that uh, we're continuing to learn. Uh, there's always new things to learn always with marketing. <laughs> How we market our workshops, websites like Eventbrite or TripAdvisor or... Or Yelp. Yes. Or yeah. 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 Things yes. to do in RVA. <laughs> you got to get on all of those local sites. Word of mouth isn't enough. Yeah, so that's that's been exciting. So that kind of takes us, what else did we do in 2022? Ooh. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> we had our first new um, partner, our first... Brand partner. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we partnered with Omtech and Xtool. Those that's were right. our first partnerships. And they kind of helped us niche down. They, they're kind of <laughs> letting us know where our niche actually lies. And apparently it's in lasers. <laughs> we continue to do more and more with that, with the laser community and laser projects because that's where our interests lie yeah. and lasers were growing. Uh, Glowforge was so hot and has been so hot. Um, and then into the scene came the Omtech and the X-Tool lasers. And I know I was bit by that laser bug and the CNC. I love being able to create things that I wouldn't be able to do out of hand. Finally, that takes us to 2023, the year of the niche down. <laughs> In the spring of 2023, we really realized, okay, again, we should niche down. <laughs> but we did finally find our niche or our niche found us. Our niche found us. Yes, we learned that lasers are where we want to be, but it's not just laser crafts. It's more uh, laser craft side hustle. We started building our Patreon community a couple of years ago. Um, but as we grew in 2022 and really throughout this year of 2023, we have built a huge Patreon community of folks. Like friends and family. Yes, I'm not even joking. It is a huge community of folks that really are doing the same type of things that we're doing. We have built that community of folks that are using lasers to do their own craft side hustle. And that's kind of where we are right now. That's, that's where we are. And with their help and their support, we were able to launch our own paint brand this year. We got some bigger partnerships coming up this next year. We really owe it all to our community. They have supported us, they've pushed us, they've guided us. You guys are our friends and family. Yeah, and that's how we hit our 100,000 subscribers. That's right. It's been quite a journey. We're really looking forward to 2024. We already have some big announcements for 2024. We got some big and plans. Some we got big announcements. Big dreams. Yeah. Big dreams. Continue you gotta with dream those. big because <laughs> what was Kim's dream job when I first met her? It was going to be, I wanted my own scrapbook store. And what was my dream? You wanted to be an art teacher. That's right. So we were able to get to kind of what our dream jobs were. Every week I get to help teach somebody a form of art. And Kim owns a craft store. I have more craft stuff than I ever <laughs> expected to own. <laughs> so if you have a dream and you have some determination, go get it. You can live your dream. Everybody should live their best one time around. And you can continue to join us on our journey as we share more crafts, more projects, more inspiration for building your own business and your own craft side hustle.